Hello and welcome to The Cellar Door. I'm George and I am at Peregrine Ridge in Heathcote. I'm going to head up to that epic cellar door and sample some of their delicious wines. Let's go. Our time in the Heathcote region is coming to an end, but there's still time for one last stop. Today I'm starting with a visit to Peregrine Ridge and I'm catching up with Sue and Graham, who evolved their love of drinking wine into a passion for making it. Hi Sue and Graham, thank you for having me here at Peregrine Ridge, your beautiful winery. This view is spectacular, it's incredible. You've built this cellar door to make the most of this view. It's a recent build, I believe. Yeah, finished last October. Mm -hmm. And this was a design that you were part of, Sue? Yeah, so we um, stood here with our architect um, oh, about 10 years ago, actually, no, or that. longer. Oh, sure. <laughs> Try 2001, Sue. <laughs> and uh, we um, located this spot as the place where we should build, mm -hmm. and then we um, went along building our vision from the bottom up, so figuring out how we were going to um, access the uh, site, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, how we were going to cut the road in, um, and then doing all the vegetation, and then eventually <clears throat> what the build would look like. But we had a vision to use the beautiful vista that we have, yeah. um, and so it was fairly uh, easy from that perspective to know we had to face to the view, so mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> We used, tried to get um, trees sourced from um, local growers using local provenance species to be able to get trees that would handle growing here with little moisture or the, with the natural rainfall um, and species that would be hard and would represent what this would have looked like many, many years ago. But yeah. on top of that, you also planted all of these vines yourselves. Yep. yep. And they're all Shiraz. Yep. All Shiraz. Is that common for this region? I know Shiraz is like a, you know, a signature varietal, but I mean, like solely Shiraz? Most of the vineyards in this particular type precinct, uh, this side of the hill, are all Shiraz. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, until you go further north and then you start to get mixed plantings. So, uh, it was a pretty straightforward decision to plant Shiraz, mm -hmm. and then... And it's we, my favourite wine. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Which came yeah, first, yeah, the yeah, passion yeah. for Shiraz or the location? Uh, it, the location had to match the passion. <laughs> Situated on the east side of the Mount Camel Range, Peregrine Ridge is one of the highest elevated vineyards in the Heathcote region. Its name is derived from the Peregrine Falcons that call it their home. What I try to focus on is getting um, the fruit that suits the wines that I'm passionate about. So I'm passionate about American oak and sparkling, mm. and Graham's passionate about French oak matured Shiraz, and also I've convinced him to like sparkling as well. So, um, so with that, it means that um, we're looking really for the fruit-driven wine uh, and a, a sort of a sweetness in the fruit without too much heavy tannins, which are going to produce the wine styles that I like. Um, and we will make sure that when that fruit comes out of the press that it goes into the, my barrels, so more of the American oak and sparkling barrels, and the rest of it will go into the various French oak styles. We know, broadly speaking, 
which blocks produce wine that's more suitable for certain styles. For the, for the iconic wines that we're trying to make, we're looking for those and we'll be picking, trying to pick that out of those blocks. Speaking of iconic wines, I think it's time to taste some. So, um, this is the sparkling Shiraz, the non-vintage. Oh my god, yum. Yum. Pretty nice, isn't it's it? So it's so good. Mm, it's um, that's really good. a really good lunchtime wine, mm. or a good wine for during the day as well. Uh, people come here for the sparkling, they come here often to have a glass of sparkling, sit down, enjoy the view, relax. So. Mm. That is really good. It's good, isn't it? I've had sparklings before that are actually quite heavy. Yeah. The sparkling yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. So sweet up front, but yeah. dry finish. Yeah. So a lot of people who don't like sparkling Shiraz, and we say, have you tried ours? No. Should give it a try, because a lot of what people don't like about sparkling Shiraz, it's too sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and this one's not too sickly sweet. Right. And this also has a good body. Mm. So uh, other people, find sparkling Shiraz just not for them for various reasons, but it might be too sweet, a little bit wishy-washy, I oh, can't do red wine with bubbles, it's just a whole lot of reasons. But there are, it's a niche product, there are a lot of people who love a sparkling. Yeah, so. including Graham now. <laughs> <laughs> we converted. <laughs> More cellar door after the break. Today we're in the Heathcote wine region and I'm chatting to owners of Peregrine Ridge, Sue and Graham. So you're obviously very passionate about wines, you know a lot about them. Has it been part of your lives from very early on? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. And do you have backgrounds in winemaking or in Just growing drinking. vines? Just drinking. <laughs> drinking and growing. Well, up, up, <laughs> <Drinking. laughs> up until we actually uh, built and Created this place, we only had wine drinking experience. Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. No so you had making. to learn very quickly. Yeah. Uh, yes. We. I went to um, uh, do the diploma winemaking mm -hmm. at the same time as we were preparing and planting the vineyard yeah. and doing the last bits of the course when we were doing our first vintage. So it ties it, in very well. well. Yeah, a bit like doing an work. apprenticeship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, learning on the job, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, as I was saying earlier, it's more about the experience that you learn as you're doing. The, the schooling is about learning a few techniques mm. and a bit of basic understanding of winemaking, but really... Learning on the job. Learning on the job that? and the fruit telling you what to do. Accepting that the fruit's got to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the tough bit. But you've got to pay attention, you've got to listen and taste and just go with what feels right. Mm. Do you yeah. remember the first time that you feel like you really nailed it? Yes, I remember. remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting expression for, for that memory. Uh, well, when I, I, like when I tell you this experience, yes. um, it was uh, 2005 vintage and uh, we were doing our final blending trials. Mm -hmm. So this was like our first commercial vintage. And Sue said, I want to bottle those two barrels as my own wine. They're <laughs> American and, oak. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, and no. I said, do you realise how expensive that's going to be for two barrels of wine? <laughs> and she said, I don't care. <laughs> We're doing it. And, uh, and that wine went on to win uh, trophy and all sorts mm -hmm. of things. So yeah, that was... And I you said... You were right. <laughs> yeah, she was right. I, so I yes. said, see, other people like it too. So <laughs> yeah. I'll have to make it again. So that's how my label developed. So it yeah, yes. started there, yeah. there yeah. and yeah. kept going. Yeah. Oh no, American oak is your thing. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. her thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> how has the French oak gone? Oh, it's done pretty well in the show circuit as well. <laughs> um, and I have noticed that as the wines age, um, Sue likes them more. There you go. <laughs> they need about six years uh -huh. or more. Uh, and, <laughs> until I would say they're what I call restaurant ready. Mm -hmm. So at that point, um, I actually start to like them. They they lose because the, the way we make the wine, it's got lovely acidity, 
and they're made in a traditional way with <coughs> mineral intervention, which means that when the wines are young, they're edgy, um, they've got high acid and they need time in the bottle to soften off and mellow out and it takes at least six years before they're starting to be cut, sort of get into a, a juvenile. They come from being like a sort of a, a kid into a, a radical two year old. Yeah, <laughs> into a juvenile phase. Um, and then over time they sort they of relax. Yeah, yeah. relax and yeah. become very approachable and very enjoyable. Just like me. So okay. this is the 2005. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Oh, wow. Bit of a treat. This is the first mm. one we ever made, actually, this type of one. Yeah, that's very special. Yeah, very special. So still travelling very nicely. Mm. A 15 year old wine. Still got Yum. quite a few years to go. And uh, got lovely bright fruit still, even though it's just changed a little bit in colour. It's gone a bit more tawny in colour. Mm. Uh, but more complex in the mouth than as a young wine. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of mellow that you get. Yeah. Bit. But yeah. not big tannin, just no. Just lovely integrated. But, and that little bit of oak. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That so. is delicious. So you can see how it's not too heavy. So mm. it lends itself to be able to serve it in the warmer months because that's why I call this, I only really have it out for Christmas because you can have it on a really hot day. Somebody served you in Melbourne on a 40 degree day and the, the meal was to have red wine. You said, oh, okay, I'll have a glass. You could still enjoy it and you could enjoy it if it was 20 degrees. Whereas some of our other reds are too big. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I feel like I could probably enjoy them at any time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. That's and a for pleasure. sharing these wines with me. Absolute treat. It's been a pleasure about <laughs> Yeah, cheers to you. Guys. Cheers. <laughs>Well, now it's time to leave Heathcote and head north to the Yarra Valley for a visit to family owned vineyard Hirsch Hill. First up, I'm meeting Eddie, who started Hirsch Hill with his brother Jack. This is your beautiful property? Yes, it purchased in the mid 80s. Mm. And uh, we basically came up here to, my brother and I, to breed horses and race horses. Yeah. And that was our passion. So you and Jack bought this property with not a thought about winemaking? Not one iota. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we had no thought about that. We just wanted to breed a few race horses and enjoy it. What got you into wine? Well, after, you know, a number of years here, we, my brother noticed that, uh, People were expanding this wine region. <laughs> Something and he was going thought, on. you know, he'll give it a shot. And if my brother took on a project, um, he studied it and um, put a lot of work into it. And he came to me one day and he said, you know, I think we should grow some, some vines here. And I said, Jack, we, we're doing racehorses. But anyway, he got his way as usual. And uh, <laughs> out the back behind me, we planted our first crop of uh, Pinot in 98, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that went on to win awards. I mean, a lot of your wines have... Yeah, we had our first crop in 2001, fairly ordinary. But as the vines matured, by 2004, we had um, gold medal winning wines. And so Jack was sort of the driving force behind oh, the wine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take no credit for the wine. <laughs> Are you more involved in the wine these days? No, no. I, you know, the baton's been passed on to um, Benjamin, my younger son, mm -hmm. and he's just doing a great job. Excellent. Ben's grabbed it with both arms and he's running with it really well. Oh, all right. Well, in that case, no offence, Eddie, but I'm off to meet Ben and the wines. So this estate has been in your family for quite a long time. They were here and they were here because they loved horses and loved breeding horses. And they found out over, you know, over the course of the few years that they were here that everyone around them was putting up vineyards and they thought, geez, we might be onto something here. So the soil was really rich in nutrients and all the good stuff to, for, good, for good wine and mm -hmm. they started planting on, on these um, vines over here. You know, they came here with a dream to, to breed horses but it ended up being, you know, the best of both worlds where they got to make some great wine as well. So Jack passed away in 2013 um, and that was really hard for our family. 
and um, he was really well known in, in the community here in Yarra Valley and they were able to commemorate him by uh, amalgamating the Jack Hirsch Memorial Cup after him which is at the Yarra Valley Racecourse and we, it's, good, it's a good place to go every year to, to see old friends of Jack and a good way to have a chat and have a beer. And a wine. And a good, yeah, and a wine, <laughs> yeah. A good Hirsch Hill, yeah. Speaking of which, let's kick off a tasting with the Chardonnay. So the Chardonnay's from the 2019 vintage. Mm -hmm. It's quite crisp. Generally in, in Yarra Valley, you'll find Chardonnays will be a little bit more buttery, a little bit more thicker, mm. whereas we like to make ours a little bit more crisp. Um, it's in 30% new French oak, extremely smooth. It's, it's not too acidic, but it's at the right amount where it makes your mouth salivate a bit and you want some more, I guess. Great. Let's do it. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite it's a bit nice. Apple -y. Yeah, it's got some apple, mm. apple notes, a bit of pear, a lot of citrus, mm. but not too sort of strong where it's you know overpowering the wine. No, it's not it's, like a sweet fruit. No, you, you want to have that sort of traditional Chardonnay taste, especially here in the Yarra Valley, that's renowned for its uh, Chardonnay. Mm. So we like to make ours a little bit more new age and more modern. This would uh, usually go quite well with you know your seafoods or fish and whatnot, but. I also think it goes really well on a nice hot day and it's quite refreshing when it's um, nice and cold and you're with a few friends. Very nice. Yes. It's the car up here with uh, my dad and my uncle, you know, family. We used to come up here, ride the quad bikes and feed the horses and it never really came to mind that I'd be working working here as, a, as an adult, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just it's awesome because I get to see and, and feel the culture and you know keep growing it within the family and that's I guess what Jack wanted as well. The wine's always been there, I guess, you know, dad drinking a glass of Herschel at dinner and it was always just it was always just, you know, second nature and you'd go, try a sip, try a sip. And it wasn't until I was about 17, 18 until I actually thought, oh, you know, maybe I could do something with this. And I had a few ideas and as time has gone on, I've sort of had a bit more responsibility and they've given me a bit more trust. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so your dad's not on Instagram, he's not? No, I don't think so. <laughs> not that I know of anyways. So a cellar door would be something really uh, awesome that would be be able to watch us help us grow I guess and um, and take advantage of this beautiful place that you're in having a cellar door is one of those things it's a, it's a business within a business and yeah. it's at the end of the day it's not my decision but I can I could try talk him into it but <laughs> we Just can talk see about what happens. it on TV yeah, like, then you'll yeah, have to do it. yeah do it dad <laughs> <laughs> before I go any further I should probably meet head winemaker Rob where did your connection to wine begin? mine came through working I grew up on a vineyard as a kid so a citrus property and vineyard I was introduced to wine at a pretty young age. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I played footy, they, some of the boys used to call me Riesling as well. Oh, really? Because I like to drink the wine with the girls. So, <laughs> so I've been involved with Hirsch Hill now since 2012. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I got to know the Hirsch family through that structure. Um, I was working over a little tiny winery called Chantel, which was uh, only about a stone's throw from where the vineyard is. And we used to have the occasional beers and wines, uh, probably almost every second night, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you are actually... Football I'm football team. oriented, so I came out of, well, I wouldn't say royalty, I, I was there for a short time, passed through the game and then worked out I wasn't probably quite good enough and trying to move on to other things. Rob went back to university in Adelaide, studied winemaking and has been in the Yarra Valley since 1991. Uh, and so you met Jack? Yep. And then how did you become involved with the winery? They were making wine elsewhere and I think we probably hit it off pretty well. I went to the footy a few times. Uh, Jack's the only person I've ever seen turn up at the MCG and go to a box in a pair of thongs and shorts. <laughs> and I took a New Zealand winemaker with me, uh, my name is Pete Mackey. And Pete was, we both got dressed up and we, there was Jack with his thongs and shorts on and he was just that type of personality, suited me perfectly. That relationship thing's a key part of winemaking and it's a key part of, I think, understanding the personalities and the people involved with it and I think that makes the key to it. And also we've probably, I think, been able to assist a little bit on the vineyard side and uh, we're there as a, a sounding board for different ideas and so forth with the wines and the different products that are happening. If you want to be in the wine industry in Australia, the best place to be is Melbourne and the Yarra Valley because you're so close to everything. You can get to the MCG in half an hour from here. Yeah, I was going to so say So I've got my lifestyle worked too, out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need to convince me, Rob. You know, I guess the rosé was something that 
um, that was a really big up and coming drink that we wanted to bring in. So making an awesome Pinot here in the Yarra Valley, we thought you know our rosé would would really do well, and we um, we got some awesome awards for our for our first rosé in 2019. We got four and a half stars from Wine State, so we were really happy with that. So we thought we're onto something good. So you know it's part of that trying to pick the right wines, I suppose, for for our for our vineyard and yeah. Yeah, the rosé is um, perfect for a nice day out with uh, a couple of friends, especially at a nice picnic. And generally, I don't want to be biased, but you know, the Yarra Valley produces a really nice Pinot Noir rosé mm -hmm. because we, I guess we are quite uh, renowned for our Pinot in, in, in the valley and creating a rosé just sort of exemplifies that we can make a really nice drop of it, so. Yeah, great. And I mean, Pinot you've been doing for, since Yeah, the since the start, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. For more than 20 years we're doing Pinot, so the vine is really quite uh, matured and we're lucky to be in such an area like the valley where the Pinot is, you know, so strong and, and so we yeah. thought making a rosé that's so popular currently in the market of wine would just be the right thing to do. Mm. But as you can see with the colour of the wine, it's, it's, it's quite light. Yeah. Um, it, the, the taste is quite, you know, citrusy. You've got those strawberry, light plum notes with, you know, um, it's something that's not extremely acidic, but it, it's really beautiful. On, on the palate and it really follows through once once you taste it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it a, that. Give it a swirl. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> you can really see that on the nose it's really got those sort of red berry sort of light Yeah there's flavors. a definite strawberry kind of that sweet but tart. Yes mm. and but it really follows through when you on the palate as well so I guess that's what we want to do with our wines is is to have a really strong nose and for it to follow through on the palate as well. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. It is. It's quite refined. It is. Mm. It's really nice, and we're quite lucky that you know having the Pinot Noir grapes like ours and here in the valley makes the makes the rosé just as good. Delicious. So the wines are looked after and kept separate, 100% separate. We don't blend any wines, and when we get closer to blending, we'll do it in conjunction with someone from the team, someone from the the Hirsch family, so Ben's been heavily involved over that period. And so this is your Hirsch Hill Pocket? Yes, yes this is the Hirsch Hill Pocket. This, this range of wines in here, there's a whole range, so you've got things like Merlot and Cabernet and Shiraz, which are from the, the 2020 vintage. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in 300 litre barrels, so you'll see these things like uh, Tonellery, which is a Beyond, which is the Cooper. Uh, then you've got Terenceau, which is another Cooper. Uh, it's Terence, all French, isn't it? All French oak, 100% French. These are 300 litre barrels, as I mentioned. Terenceau tends to be a little bit sweet, by middle palate weight. Um, Beyond is a little more savoury characteristic in terms of the oak. So every oak barrel will give you a different characteristic. There's some Damay up there. Damay is actually my favourite one you know, in terms of the oak styles. And then one up above is uh, Gillet, I think. So there's all these different barrels and they go right the way through here. So this batch of wines would be about, oh, about 7,000 cases worth in terms of these little parcels through here. Loads of drinking, good fun drinking. Is there a particular uh, style that you're most excited about for 21? 21 would be, I think Shiraz looks the strongest of this range of wine. Uh, Chardonnays are very strong out of the vintage. Cabernets, on the, they're much finer, uh, not as big and robust as they've been in previous years. Time for a good old fashioned barrel tasting. Come in, I'm going to show you some Merlot. Okay, great. All right, so some out of barrel. So this is in a slightly older barrel, but it's probably about four years old. We've got a mixture of about 30% new. Everything that we do for her shoe is okay. It's all hand-picked, uh, made in smaller volumes. We do a bit of foot stomping, some whole bunch work, all sorts of things. Wow. You'd be amazed what you get up to sometimes at the winery. <laughs> Stop Let's the taste the Merlot. Let's go for it, enjoy. <laughs> So obviously no finished wine, nice and fresh and live. You can see the vibrancy of colour. It hasn't been filtered at all, so it's a raw wine. It's about six months away. Uh, in this industry, you can use 15% of another variety in the blend. This will get a little bit of Cabernet in to just strengthen a little, mm -hmm. and may get a little bit of Shiraz, a couple of percent, but it's not far off if we make a straight mm. Merlot, or turn we do a Cabernet Merlot blend. Some of the best wines we've made are from some difficult vintages. Mm. Good winemakers are about making great wines in tough years, mm -hmm. and that's what we're trying to do. Well done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Your Chardonnay, for example, got yeah. 95 
Hoyts and Halliday. Yeah, yeah, we've had some good ratings over the years. Mm. It's one of them. We've had a yeah, Cabernet get our 2015, all the 2015 wines were, you know, superb. We had 94, 93 for our 2015 Shiraz. Mm -hmm. um, the 2015 Cab was also about 93 or 94 from Halliday's. The Cabernet, the famous Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, yeah we um, we really make a really nice drop of, uh, yeah, of Cabernet Sauvignon. Particu it's particularly unusual because Yarra Valley historically isn't known for its Cabernet, mm. but somehow we've just uh, hit gold with our Cabernet. We seem to be making drop after drop of seems to be, you know, gold medals and 95 holidays and yeah. award winners, and they're just remarkable. And this is the 2017? 2017, this particular Cabernet Sauvignon won the best Cabernet Sauvignon in the Yarra Valley at the Melbourne International Wine Competition. It's pretty good. So that was a pleasant surprise, yeah. um, especially being amongst some real uh, heavy hitters here in the Yarra Valley. There's some really big wineries and to take mm. that award from, from a little player like us, we were really uh, wrapped about that. Yeah. yeah. Let's try it. Let's get into it. What kind of, what style Cabernet is this one? So this Cabernet, as you can see, it's quite dark and purpley in colour. It's got, it's very full bodied. Um, we blend it with our Merlot grapes. It's about 13 or 14% Merlot, so it gives it that smooth finish mm -hmm. that people really love. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that might be the, the secret to our success there, but it's, it's got those dark bouquet of, you know, red plum and dark berries, mm. and it's quite, you know, it's got that spice and yeah. oak. We use 30% um, new French oak on uh, our Cabernet, and it's, yeah, really delicious. How long does it spend in the barrel? Usually 12 to 18 months. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's very nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful drop and um, it's only getting better with age. Mm. It seems to be one particular spot of the Cabernet which keeps reproducing top wine and it's over the creek where we were chatting before, that area oh, yeah. particularly, for some reason, keeps producing amazing wine. So, Interesting. Yeah. But it's got a beautiful long finish. Yeah, it does. That's the, that's the Merlot. <laughs> Yum. Well, there might not be gold in the hills, but there's gold in the creek. Yeah, so I think so. Yeah, I reckon. Delicious. Thank you so much, Ben. No, cheers. Thank you. Cheers again. Cheers. <laughs> Well, that's it from me. Thanks for joining me. And don't forget, if you'd like to catch up on old episodes, you can check out our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time for more Cellador. Door.